This video will cover the Apex unpacking and CAU preparation for cable entry. I'll be using a 6 ground Apex X2 with an inner basket for installation today. X1 and X3 have similar installation practices. The tools needed for installing an Apex include a K and wrench, optional 3 8 by 7 16 inch ratchet wrench, cable preparation tools, splicing tools, safety glasses, and all other safety equipment required by your organization. After removing the Apex from the box, secure all kits from the box to ensure nothing is thrown out by accident. Look at the bottom of the Apex with the alignment tab and insert at 12 o'clock for planning your port usage. Port 1 and 2 are typically backbone ports as they enter the basket near the spline. Ports 3 and 4 are typically branch fiber cables. Port 5 and 6 are typically drop cables. However, all ports on the Apex base can support the same size cable. Minimum and maximum cable diameters can be found in the installation instructions for that particular model of Apex. Safety is a priority for all sealed closures. Confirm there is no pressure or vacuum in the Apex by activating the plunger of the flash test on the dome. Apex has a toolless entry. Open the locking ring by pulling the lock ring latch with the closure secured. Once unlatched, continue to walk the ring latch open until the lock ring is released. Put the lock ring somewhere safe. With the closure alignment tab at 12 o'clock, slide the apex base from the dome. Note the attached O-ring and store the dome to keep the O-ring clean and free of debris. I will be using an optional universal apex installation stand, which will support all versions of apex, X1, X2, and X3 for ease of assembly. While not required, it is recommended for use. Later in the video, we will demonstrate the stand in more detail for each application. Simply align the closure with the alignment tab at 12 o'clock and secure side latches. Remove both Velcro straps and put in a safe location until the installation is complete. Remove all packing and bags from shipping and discard material properly. Remove all splice trays installed at the factory. For X1 and X2, simply lift the tray slightly and separate the hinge with a sheath knife or screwdriver. Rotate the tray, opposing the disengaged hinge to release the tray from the spline. Set the tray in a safe location and repeat until all trays are removed. For all versions of X3, simply raise the tray to about 45 degrees and rotate the tray from spline. Do not force it. There is a spot where it is designed to be released as well as installed. If the apex was ordered with an inner basket, it will be removed in the same fashion as the tray according to the closure family. Disengage the hinge on the X1 and X2 and on X3, lift the inner basket to 45 degrees to disengage the inner basket. If there is no inner basket ordered from the factory, it will ship with basket tabs installed. If the inner basket is removed in the field, basket tabs will be in the kit. The closure is now ready to add the first cable. Rotate the apex 180 degrees in its stand and re-engage the installation stand side latches. I'm using port one and port two for backbone application mid sheath of fiber. Ensure port one and port two gel compression screws are relaxed or in the loosened position. Remove the sealing wedges without any tools. Simply depress the sealing wedge latch with your thumb or forefinger. Slide the top of the latch assembly towards the base to release the latch. Gently pivot the sealing wedge from the hinging at the bottom of the wedge. Try to hold the orange port plug in place to secure the inner gel. The sealing wedge has four main components gel compression screw, which compresses the gel blocks, compression spring, which maintains constant pressure sealing through thermal changes, gel block latch ridge, which engages the inner gel block to ensure uniform compression, sealing wedge gel block, which mates to the inner gel block for sealing. The orange port plug is only needed if no cable will be installed in an apex cable port. The inner gel is retained in the base by a plastic ridge, which engages with a slot in the base. If the gel blocks come out together, when opening sealing wedge, simply pull them apart and reinstall the inner gel. The inner gel block back into the base by mating the plastic edge of the slot at the bottom of the cable port. If either gel block is dropped or contaminated with dirt or debris, simply rinse it with water to remove the debris. Place the sealing wedge someplace safe and repeat for port two. Bolted in the base is the rectangular alignment tab for the CAU bracket. At this point in time, we can begin to prep the cable needed for the installation. I'm going to use an 864 spiderweb ribbon cable for the backbone and a lateral to a 48 fiber loose tube cable. 